in conversation with Mr. TV Narendran, the managing director of Tara Steel, one of the largest steel producers in the world. Thank you very much, sir, for talking to Money Control. Give us a sense of the mood at Davos this time around. Is it very pessimistic or are people hopeful uh, of a pickup and uptick in China since they've opened up the economy now? Uh, what trends are you picking up? Thank you for having me here. Uh, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. If you talk to all the Indian delegates who are here, everyone's optimistic and ri rightly so. If you talk to the Europeans, they're quite pessimistic. Uh, the Americans are also waiting to see how long will the in inflation stay. But I think America has always displayed tremendous resilience and I expect it to bounce back. To me, uh, the positives have been uh, China. I've been hearing a lot of good stuff coming out of China. Um, you know, over the last two, three years, I understand the savings rate in China was about 35% compared to 25%, which is normal for them. And uh, there's an expectation that all that will start, uh, will come into the consumption economy as well as into the travel economy. Uh, I'm told the request to travel out of China, or the travel uh, platforms are seeing requests for more than which are growing at three digits, you know, it's like more than 100% growth. So there's an enormous amount of uh, pent up demand, I think, which is probably going to come out of China, despite all the challenges that they're facing. And that gives me a little bit more optimism than when I came to Davos. Japan has also been a fairly good story. So I think uh, you're seeing many major economies also looking optimistic. Right. There are concerns that, you know, India's economic growth may slow down, hit by global supply shortages, as well as high input costs. Uh, the RBI is also expected to stay hawkish given the elevated inflation. So given all, you know, these factors, the confluence of these factors, what's your view on how this can impact uh, the steel industry? Sure. So, you know, even if you look at inflation in India, I think the worst is behind us. I think the last couple of months, things have started dipping. Also, the inflation that we've seen is not something we've not seen in the past. I think if you look at the developed world, they've not seen this kind of inflation for a long time. So I think in India, things are a bit more under control than we've seen in the past. And I think uh, things will get better. As far as steel industry is concerned, there are two factors. One mm -hmm. is the demand side. Mm -hmm. And I think the demand side is strong because of the government's continued focus on infrastructure. And I think that will continue because you have the elections next year as well. So the government will be keen to complete a lot of the projects that they've started. On the supply side, the cost pressures are there because uh, coking coal costs have been trending up. Actually, iron ore prices have been going up, again, reflecting what's happening in China. So there will be cost pressures on the steel industry because, as you saw from the numbers, most steel companies are not making money. And uh, hence, there's not much room to go down further. And even if you see in China in the last uh, four weeks, uh, steel prices have gone up almost uh, local. Domestic steel prices have gone up almost $100. So I'm quite positive over the prospects of the industry over the next few quarters. And globally also, you mentioned the in terms of your glo the global steel outlook that you see. So globally, yes, in Asia, we're certainly seeing steel prices uh, go up. In Southeast Asia, it's up at least uh, uh, $70, $80. Domestic price in China, up $100. In Europe, price increases have been sought. Uh, but uh, Europe, the fundamentals are still a bit weak. Mm. But good news is gas prices have been dropping. While it doesn't seem so, but this is seen <laughs> as a warmer summer. Yeah. I mean, warmer winter than normal. <laughs> But uh, I think uh, that's positive. Warm, I, I can't imagine what <laughs> cold would look like. So, so hence gas prices are settling in Europe. And I think uh, the worst of the crisis as far as Europe is concerned on gas is behind them. Right. While we, we've seen, you know, a demand uptick in prices have, you know, still remained muted. Do you expect that to change? What's your outlook as far as prices are concerned? So as you may have seen, the steel prices have been going up for the in India for the last couple of weeks, uh, hmm. partly driven by demand because J January to June is typically the peak season for steel consumption. Right. So we're seeing that kicking in. And secondly, uh, steel companies, like I said, have pretty much reached the bottom as far as prices are concerned. So over the last month, I think uh, steel prices, both in flat and long products, have got up around three to 5,000 rupees. Uh, but it's still at levels which are much lower than what we saw one year back. Right. If I look at your net profit, sir, you know, the first six months of FY23 was significantly lower than a year ago. So how has the year panned out so far for you and how do you expect to close the current fiscal? I think what we've guided in the past was uh, Q2 in some sense for India uh, was the toughest quarter because you had the confluence of high coking coal prices and low steel prices. Things started improving. Margin expansion started happening in Q3. Not as much as we expected, but it will continue going forward. So I see the India side uh, continuing to do better quarter on quarter. Europe probably will have its toughest quarter in Q3 because uh, that's when the demand was most fragile and the costs were not any lower. But I'm seeing things starting to improve in Europe as well.
right and as far as deleveraging your balance sheet is concerned you know i think you mentioned that is one of your priorities so how do you see that panning out again how will the debt figures look at, by the end of fy23 i wouldn't give a guidance on the specific debt figures for the uh, end of the uh, uh, year yet uh but i think uh, what we were committed to about 3 4 years back is at least a billion dollars of deleveraging every year we did more than that uh, in the last 3 years this year of course it's a challenging year because of gas prices in europe coal prices working capital in fact working capital is taken in a lot of uh, money we also bought uh, nilachal for about 12000 crores so uh, this year uh, i don't know if you're going to have that deleveraging but uh, the commitment to deleveraging continues right you also in fact since you brought up nilachal you completed the acquisition of nilachal ispat then you know i think you started operations of the unit in october so how much you need to invest to get this unit in shape and by when do you expect to reap the full benefits so you know we uh, pretty much got the uh, biz, uh, the uh, the operations going within 3 months uh, you know they were close to almost 3 years so that was a great work done by the team uh, we didn't have to spend so much capex to get it going to this level and we'll take it to a million tons a year without much capex maybe 2 300 crores of capex that's more to take care of uh, spares and things like that uh, the major capex will happen after this we want to expand it to about 5 million and then to 10 million we'll go to our board in the next few months when we uh, ramp it up to a million and then uh, you know then come back on the capex uh, that is required but already the plans are being made right tata steel has you know also been very acquisitive i think some of your uh, Bhushan Steel, Usha Martin, as well as Nila Nilachal. So, will you be open to doing more acquisitions? What kind of appetite do you have, or from here on, is it you know going to be more organic, sort of doubling down on the acquisitions that you've already made? So, you know, with the uh, assets that we have in our portfolio today, uh, we can realize our growth ambitions for the next five to ten years. You know, because uh, we are today producing about 20 million tons in India, going through an expansion of five million in Kalinga Nagar that takes us to 25. Mm -hmm. and between kalinganagar angul the nilachal site and jamshedpur we can easily go to 45 to 48 million tons so we have enough uh, land in our existing sites to do that uh, having said that obviously any opportunity will be looked at on a case to case basis but we are in a stronger position because uh, we can realize our growth ambitions even without doing any inorganic growth but whether we'll do it or not we'll decide later right thank you very much sir thank for you. talking thank to you. us